Vengeance of the Moon Knight, issue number one. That's right, folks. This is the spinoff series, the continuation series of Jed McKay's 30-issue arc on Moon Knight. What I would consider to be the best modern Moon Knight story, dare I say, the best the character has ever been handled. It's hard to say because there's been a lot of good stuff, but we haven't had it like this before, which is really insane to think about. 30 issues of a Moon Knight run in 2023. That's crazy. That is crazy to think about because we rarely get that anymore. The book sold surprisingly good at Marvel. So much so that they wrapped up the arc and they jumped right into a new one. Now you could look at this a couple of different ways. The first one would be this is just issue 31, which is how I'm seeing it because it definitely plays as an issue 31. It also plays as a first issue, which is the thing, and I get that. I know how modern comic books work. We can't have an issue 31 of Moon Knight, but we can bump up sales again with a new costume for a Moon Knight and call it Vengeance of the Moon Knight number one, and that's going to sell pretty good. So I could see this this series. I don't know how long it would, would go for. My guess would be 6 to 12 issues. I could see this running through 2024 and then we don't get it, and then whatever the next MCU iteration looks like, we get another Moon Knight book then. So, it's Vengeance of the Moon Knight. I've talked about it before. The first Moon Knight book I've owned and read myself was the original Vengeance of the Moon Knight run from 2010. I love that title. And in that title, Jake Lockley is the primary like name and alter that is used throughout the character. And that led me to believe that this was going to be the book where Jake Lockley takes over the persona of Moon Knight. Now, I have other theories we'll talk about in a minute here. Primarily, I'm still thinking that this is Jake Lockley. That's just me. Again, we didn't see a dead body. They kind of address that in this book. It could be completely different, but let's get into it. No more rambling. Let's get into Vengeance of the Moon Knight, because this is just a continuation of the Jed McKay stuff. So at the end of the last arc in issue 30, it was the fight between Mark and Black Spectre. He defeated them by blowing up the machine that was going to turn all of New York crazy. And then Zodiac went to kill Black Spectre. Crazy. It's pretty fun. I liked it. We open up this issue with 8-Ball kind of like knocked out and passed out on like the floor of the Midnight Mission. And that's happening in the current timeline. But we open this book like we did the last arc of Moon Knight. And now we go to see Dr. Sternum, and she is talking to Reese, because now Reese is essentially occupying the Mr. Knight role. You can kind of look at this as like every one of the characters is now doing a different thing. You know, Hunter's Moon becomes the actual Moon Knight. Greer's kind of doing the more like intense Jake Lockley stuff. Soldier's a little more prim and proper. He could be the Steven, but Reese is the Mr. Knight in this role. So she's kind of like having a session now talking to sternum and she's kind of asking like well what did you guys do when you found out mark was dead like what did you do well it was kind of a hard thing to decide we didn't have a body we had no way to contact marlene or his daughter or any of his old associates but it felt like we should do something because he helped a lot of people in the community so we sat shiva for him like that's all we could really do for all of them we sat shiva but we didn't really know how to do that so we had to find someone who knew a thing or two about it. So they got a hold of Ben Grimm and he showed up. He's wearing a suit. He's got some food and he always would send Mark a Hanukkah card. And I thought that was really cool. And we see it's like him with Alicia and their kids. And he was like, I'll do my best to help out. He gives Greer a hug. Just like, I know you the most. I'm sorry for all of this. Mark was, would, would we put him in like the top Marvel Jewish characters? I think Grimm is obviously the top, Magneto's at the top, Kitty Pride is another one at the top. I guess Mark would occupy like the role four or five in that. So this is a really cool thing to see. So Ben Grimm, he's like, look, I, I, I don't know when the funeral was, if I missed it or not. Uh, I don't know what happened there. We didn't really do anything. Mark didn't really want a funeral, but we want to sit Shiva for him if we can find a way to do that. I don't really know how. So... Ben's the one that kind of puts it all together. You know, he he brings food, he sets up the date, he sets up he sets up the whole event, and he invites some people in the community. So a couple of superheroes who actually had ties do show up, like Captain America, Doctor Strange and Clea, Mockingbird and Hawkeye. They all kind of show up to pay their respects, and that's pretty cool. You know, I know Jed's writing Doctor Strange, so it makes sense they're there, and Captain America being there, Hawkeye being there, it's, it's like, it makes sense to me. I'm fine with all that. 
it's pretty cool. So they set Shiva for a bit, and while they don't work for seven days, a lot of the other heroes picked up the slack in the neighborhood. They kind of cleaned up the midnight mission, which is kind of cool to see. But then after the seven days were over, they went back to work, and their first thing to happen... Well, actually, there's, the first thing we should talk about before that is Sternum asks if Reese is going to become Moon Knight, if she's going to take over the mantle of Moon Knight, and she's like, no, I'm not. I inherited the Midnight Mission. My job is to use the Midnight Mission. That is what I will do. I dropped out of school for it, and I know you're going to say shit about it, Sternum, but I'm 19 years old forever now because I'm a vampire. I have my whole life to learn this stuff. So then we cut to the first like attack that the new Midnight Mission will be facing off against in the neighborhood. It's like two haunted mansion looking asses, hatbox ghost looking asses called Mr. Sulk and Mr. Smile. Reese and Soldier go to fight them. They're like demons, so their guns aren't working. But Reese has the stench of vampire, so that kind of like lures them to have a certain point of view. Again, it's the same creative team. So it's Capuccio doing the artwork. It's Rochelle Rosenberg doing the colors. It looks really great. It's still super impressive. It, I'm, I'm obsessed with the way this book looks. It's some of my favorite stuff in comic books right now. And these stupid creatures, Mr. Sulk and Mr. Smile, they look so crazy and stupid and are like perfect like one-off villains for this type of book. How do you defeat a demon? Well, you have to call a priest. So Badir appears on one of the rooftops and he, he like summons like a prayer thing. He's like, one of the greatest gods, you who are called Traveler, Embracer, Pathfinder, defeat these creatures. And then like, it's like a bright moon shines down above Badir. He holds up his medallion and it kind of burns the souls away. And they're able to save, like, the lost souls that were being taken by Mr. Salk and Mr. Smile. But one of the women that was captured is like, I know you're the Moon Knight, I know you're the Midnight Mission, but which one of you is Moon Knight? Which kind of opens like, well, he's dead. Shit. What do we do about that? Crazy. And that leads to the question from Sternum, because Soldier and Badir were working there. What is Tigra doing? What is Greer up to? Well, she is the only one supposedly trying to get revenge for what happened to Mark. She's tracking down people that worked with Black Spectre. She finds one in a warehouse and she's feral. Like she is gone completely feral. She's about to like mutilate and kill this guy. She has scratches all over him. I mean, if Tigra was not like consistently an inconsistent character, I might be annoyed by this portrayal. But if we look at her arc throughout the entire Moon Knight series, which is where she has been for the past couple of years, she has finally accepted that she has had trouble in her life and she wants to make amends for that. She found happiness with Mark because he was willing to find happiness with her. So her being somebody who has always acted out in this aggressive way, losing the one connection that she finally had found solace in, I'm not upset by this reaction. It is aggressive and scary. And when she has like a showdown of Reese, it gets very intense. You're like, oh shit, she's got blood on her face, fangs out, ready to kill Reese. It's crazy. But I do like it. I do like it. Like, it, it works for me. I don't know how it's going to play forever, but I don't think it's going to last forever. So that is fine by me. But Sternum's like, well, okay. I see what she's doing. All this makes sense. But it, it sounds to me, Reese, that you are not somebody who's taking the death of Mark Spector seriously. Or taking it with, like, having any real reaction to it. But Reese kind of explains, like, this is not the first time he's died. He's died, like, four times canonically or something. And literally, in earlier issues, Hunter's Moon died, and then Mark brought him back to life. So I'm not, like, worried he's going to be dead. I do think he will be back, because comic books are cyclical, and everybody comes back, of course. But I just I just don't know how he's going to come back or when it's going to be. A Fisticonchu doesn't die, which is a great thing to learn about. But, so, okay. That leads us to the last person of the team, and I want to ask you about that, Reese. What's up with 8-Ball? Oh yeah, 8-Ball. What's, what's he up to? Well, we cut to see what 8-Ball is doing at that moment. He's running away from moon darts? From like crescent moon darts? They are sticking into his leg. They smash into his helmet. He is being broken apart. Mark's entire thing of 8-Ball was finding redemption for him, and now he is being murdered and destroyed and it's terrifying and you're like is this gonna be good what's about to happen here 
This guy's being destroyed, but luckily he manages to evade whatever is attacking him. And we see, like, at this moment, because, like, the, the book opened up with, like, 8-Ball being attacked and almost killed. We see at the midnight mission, everybody else is waiting for him. He comes smashing through the window or door or something. He's like, I couldn't get away. I couldn't get a ride. It couldn't be him, could it? What was that? And then we hear, like, a voice out in the distance. It's like, vampires, supervillains in my house, in my territory? What is this? What is this? And that's why we see that Reese actually went to Sternum, not because she was seeking grief counseling, but because she's afraid of what could happen. She's like, you're afraid he's not going to come back? You're afraid Mark is gone forever? She's like, no, I'm afraid he came back, but he came back wrong because I didn't recognize the Moon Knight that I saw that night. And the book ends with our first look fully of the Moon Knight that will be the new Moon Knight or whatever in this book. And he is breaking through the Midnight Mission, ready to attack those that he potentially once served with. He's like, get out of my house. So, we don't have to spend too much time doing the speculation on this. I feel like it's going to be done for everybody that reads this book. What I'll say is I have a couple thoughts. If it's Mark, it would make sense for like the get out of my house thing if he came back wrong. Mark, having been resurrected poorly makes sense to me. It could be this thing where maybe Zodiac found his body and tried to resurrect Mark, but he did it poorly and now he is this. It could be a different altar has emerged in this moment and maybe a new person has taken over. It could be a couple of things. We just had the City of the Dead book. Maybe it's Leila El Foyle who is back, or maybe it's Randall who is back. Two characters from that book possessing the body of Mark Spector. What I solely believe is it's a character we know. I think that's going to be the case. And I like the design. Like, it's the inverse colors, which is kind of a cool thing to see. I do prefer the white, but, you know, that's just history. It makes more sense for what they've built the character to be. But for this being the new arc, which it is. This is the continuating arc from the last issue. It's also the start of a new era. It's really impressive. And it did something pretty cool, pretty unique, that I truly wasn't expecting from this book. And that was like, we're going to spend a lot of time with Reese, which makes sense. She is essentially the new Moon Knight persona. She is the person that has become the Moon Knight role in this world. And I appreciate that we get to see how everyone else reacts to everything going on, which is also very interesting. It's going to be cool to see what we do. Like, this book uses a lot more purple colors because we have Sulk and Smile, which is kind of cool. But we also... I, I'm actually going to go back and check it out because we... we what was the... Because uh, the other personas in the last issue, they had colors for, like, their lettering. And Mark was always clouded in, like, a hue of blue every time he walked around. So this Moon Knight is kind of, when we first see them, sh shrouded in red... But that's more just like the blood on their hands, but there's a little highlights of blue in it too. And I, I believe it was Jake or Steven had the red dial. I think it was Steven that had the red lettering. I, I don't know if my theory is correct. I'm still, I've still, I don't want to be like, like, you know, dead set on my thoughts. I'm still going to say this is Jake Lockley. I could be completely wrong, but the last time we had Avengers of the Moon Knight book, Jake Lockley was the one piloting Moon Knight and... You know, McKay's been pulling some good pulls lately, so that could be it. I don't know, but I really liked it. Hasbro, let's get a two-pack with this and a Mr. Knight figure. Let's get a two-pack of this and a new Tiger figure. Just give me Reese. Give me 8-Ball. Give me some Moon Knight Marvel toys, please, that look like this. I could see this coming out this year or next year, but whatever. I like it. You know, as a Moon Knight fan, I do like it. So, Vengeance of the Moon Knight issue number one, I am going to give a 9 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. Praise be Conchu.